A video on box plots. Okay, so these are this is a type of uh, way that we could display one variable data. So one variable, meaning we just we're comparing one um, one thing. So for example, let's say we wanted to look at the heights of different people in our class. So we could survey the heights of everyone in the class. So let's say this was, these are all the heights of the people in our class in centimeters. So there's someone that's 138 centimeters, 152, 165. So these are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 different people and their heights. So if we wanted to create a box plot to display this data, first step, we would have to put the data in order from smallest to biggest. So you have to do that first. That's your first step. Okay, so I already did that. So I put my data in order. So these are all my heights, 138, 150, etc. Um, and then basically what you're gonna do next is you're just gonna split the data into four sections called quartiles. So we're gonna put the data in four sections. Uh, and we're also gonna find the smallest piece of data and the biggest piece of data. Let's start there, that seems like the easiest. Okay, so the minimum, the smallest number in the whole bunch of heights here is 138 centimeters. So that's our smallest, that's our minimum. And then our tallest person is 181, so that's our maximum height. Next step, we want to split the data into four sections. So easiest to start in the middle. So let's find the middle of our data. So since there's 11 pieces of data, if I count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, I can see that this one right here is the middle piece of data. And it's got five pieces of data on either side of it. So 165 is our middle height. Okay, then after we've got that one, then we're just going to examine the first section of data. And we're going to figure out which one's the middle in the first section of data. So the middle number in the very first section is 159. So we call that Q1. Um, and then we're going to look at the next five numbers, the final five, and we're going to find the middle in that, and we're going to call that Q3. So you can see we've kind of split the data into like four sections, I guess. Okay. I should also mention that Q2 is special. Q2 is, since it's the middle number in a set of data, we also call Q2 the median. All right, so now that we have all this information, we are gonna take these five numbers and create our box plot. Okay, so here's how we do that. So we make a scale, so I made a red line, and then I'm just gonna make a somewhat of a scale for it. So I know I have to go all the way from 138 up to 181. So I think I'll start my scale down here at 130. And I have to get all the way up to like 185-ish. So maybe I'll space it out and just go up by tens. Ooh, I think I could space it out more. 40, 150, 160, 170, 180. Okay, wait, let me try one more time. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay, sorry, mine's not gonna be perfect. I don't think I'll just put the stuff in between too. Okay, so I made a little scale, somewhat equally spaced. 
Um, and then my next step is I'm going to indicate the minimum and the maximum piece of data. So the minimum is at 138. So I'm going to put a line around where 138 would be. And then the maximum is at 181. So I'm going to put a line approximately where that would be. So those are my outermost ends. And then my quartiles, these, these three numbers here, I'm going to indicate those. So Q1 would be at 159, so I'm just going to put a little line there. Q2 would be at 165, so there. And Q3 would be at 175. And then my quartiles, I'm going to attach them and make them into like a box. And then I'm going to attach the ends of the box to the minimum and the maximum. So sometimes you might, instead of calling it a box plot, some people might call it a box and whisker plot because it's kind of like the box there, whereas these two things are like the whiskers. So it just kind of shows the spread of our data. It's just a nice visual to look at all the heights and see how they're distributed in our class. And you could even compare them to other one variable data. So let's say we had another group of people and these were their, their heights. So maybe we want to make a box plot out of those and compare it to the other class. Okay, so let's try this one. Okay, so minimum, our minimum number is 145. And our maximum is 170. The next number we should find is Q2, which is our middle number. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, what happens now? There's no middle number. So it turns out we have to take the middle of the two middle numbers. Um, so I'm just looking and I see that there's seven numbers in between there. And I know half of seven would be three and a half. So I know my middle number is going to be 156.5. So that's going to be my middle number. So if there is no middle middle number, you have to take the middle of the two numbers that are in the middle. And if you're having trouble figuring out that it's 156.5, another way to do that is to take the mean or the average of those two numbers. And if you forget how to do that, it's just adding them together um, and then dividing them by two. And that's how you get an average or the mean. Okay, so that's Q2. Um, and now when we find Q1 and Q3, I go ahead and I use 153 in my beginning section and I'll use 160 in my end section because those aren't actually Q2. Okay, so then I gotta find the middle of my first section of data, which is again gonna be in the middle of two numbers. Uh, so this time in between 147 and 155, I, I can see that there'll, there'll be eight. They're eight away from each other. So I know if I go up another four, that'll be right in the middle. So 151 will be Q2, or sorry, Q1. Um, and then same with this section. So this is gonna be right in the middle for me. So I need a number right in between 162 and 170. And I'm thinking 166 is gonna be right in between. So that'll be Q3. Okay, so now I've found all my numbers. Now I'm just gonna make a sketch. So I'll start with like a vertical, or sorry, a horizontal line, um, and then I'll make a scale. So I'll start down here at, actually, you know what would be good? Instead of just plotting it on there, maybe we could add it to our other box plot. So I'm just gonna copy this. Okay, so this was our first class. So we'll call it class one. And now let's graph um, our other box plot on the same grid, then we can compare them easier. Okay, so minimum is at 145, so we'll just indicate that. And our maximum is at 170, put a line. Q1's at 151, put a line. 
Q2 is at 156.5, so I mean just roughly, and Q3 is at 166. So here, and then I'll enclose them in a box with some whiskers. And this is class two. So then you're kind of able to compare the two classes to each other. Um, so just some observations. I can see that class one has a bigger spread of heights. Like it, it covers a larger range. So there's a lot different, a lot more. <laughs> there's a bigger difference between the tallest and the shortest person in the class. Um, I can also see that the like middle age of each class is quite different. So the middle age or the median of class one is like 165 or so. Whereas class two, um, it's closer to 156. So like you can just see that the class two middle height is lower than class one. Um, yeah. One more thing I should say about box plots too, since you know that they're split up into quarters, um, another cool thing is in each section, so between the minimum and Q1 is 25% of the class is in that section. And then between Q1 and Q2, 20, another 25% of the class will be there. Between Q2 and Q3, that's another quarter of the class. And then the final 25% is between Q3 and the max. So even though these like boxes look bigger, it just means their heights are more spread out. There's actually the same number of people in that section. So there you go.